Good evening and thank you for joining us on Core TV News at 7. I am Ebulomo Adikunle. The Commissioner of Police in Imo State, Abdul Majid Ali, says six persons have been arrested in connection with the two improvised explosive devices planted at the Living Faith Church, otherwise called Winner's Chapel, in Oweri. Ali, who spoke to journalists at the church premises along Port Arcot Road, says the two time bombs were planted at the church premises by unknown persons. According to him, the command was alerted about the strange objects in the church compound. Ali says the command would do everything possible to unravel the perpetrators of the act. He urged the people to go about their normal activities as the two IEDs have been detonated. The brigade Commander, 34 Artillery Brigade, Uweri, Larry Bailey confirmed that explosives were capable of keep killing many people at a time. Contrary to widespread beliefs that Sudan has rejected Nigeria's extradition requests for Sadiq Oguche, the Yaya bomb blast mastermind, the federal government says efforts to bring him back are still ongoing. According to the Director, Public Communications, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ahmed Ogbole Ode, the process of extraditing Oguche is being handled by the International Criminal Police Organization, Interpol. It stated that the process is a long-drawn one, which requires a lot of paperwork and tendering of evidence that shows that the suspect was indeed involved in what he's been sought for. The director stated that the move to bring in back Oguche was not foreclosed to get, adding that efforts to extradite him were still on. Ogbole Ode explained that the process of bringing back the suspect to stand trial for his alleged crime would be completed when all the necessary formalities had been completed. He stressed that the federal government is unaware that Sudan is frustrating the repatriation of Oguche saying that the process of bringing back the suspect has been handled by the Interpol and it is a government-to-government -government thing. Meanwhile, legal practitioners have described the refusal by the Sudanese government to grant Nigeria's request to extradite the mastermind of the Yaya bam blast in Abuja to political which is likely to lead into a diplomatic field if not properly managed. One of them says the refusal only boils to lack of a healthy relationship between both countries and the clause of religious affiliations involved in the case. To some extent, the Sudanese government are uh, actually trying to frustrate the federal government's effort. But you don't just send delegates to a country and ask for a tradition of um, an accused person when you really don't even have a treaty with that country. You remember Sudan does not have a extradition treaty with any country in the world. And so knowing fully well, with that at the back of your mind, I expect um, our diplomat to know this. The basic things they asked for from what we gathered also are, one, they needed the charge sheet to actually confirm that this man you are asking for had been charged for an offense. And he'd been charged for an offense, this offense has been charged for, these are the ingredients of the offense. And this is, um, you know, actually the act. And then you now begin, it is from there you now begin to ask for a tradition. If you establish your claim, mostly especially when, you know, you don't have a, a, a signed uh, a treaty with that country. For his part, Justice Huegu says the development has again proven the political foundation in touch with the insurgents and warns that a conflict might ensue if the right actions are that not you taken. Cannot hand over, which means uh, the diplomatic relationship there is not working. The UN relationship there is not working. The African Union relationship there is not working. And such thing might lead to war between a country and a country. Comment by former President Olusha Gombasanjo that the federal government is not supporting his negotiation with Boko Haram for the freedom of the abducted girls has been generating controversies. A lawyer, Tsunde Kolawili, and a lecturer at the Yaba College of Technology in Lagos, Olufemi Akinshola, admonished the federal government to be supportive for all moves to bring back the girls. Whether the outcome of his negotiation is going to be binding or useful is a different. He could go ahead if the federal government don't give their consent uh, to do the negotiation. But <laughs> of what, what use will the, will the outcome of the negotiation be? 
if he doesn't have if he doesn't have a binding effect, if he doesn't have the consent of the because by and large when you are negotiating with people, he's uh, a trade by battery. Absolutely like uh, since he has put it on the pages of the newspaper, if I were Mr President, a very good Lord Jonathan, I will give him the, 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 the my consent. I will give him the authority to go ahead and negotiate with the Boko Haram. Also on the pages of the newspaper, like he has said, since he's put it on the rooftop now. So I will also do the same thing because at the end of the day, if anything on tours happens to those guys, and the passenger is already sanded that warning that uh, most of the guys are not loving and never likely to return back to us, then the president will be blamed that I was somebody who gave us uh, an opportunity to really get these guys back. And Mr. President turned the blind eye or a deaf ear and uh, a non smelling nose to, to, to the request uh, to negotiate with the Pokwara. Since he has offered himself on a platter of good free of charge to the government to do the negotiation, it will just be a wise thing for the government to grant him that request. Let him negotiate on behalf of the government uh, with the Boko Haram and uh, if the agreement or the terms of the agreement is uh, good to the government, they implement it. Fatke Shola, the refusal of Nigeria's extradition requests by Sudan to have the alleged mastermind of the Yaya bombing, Aminu Sadiq Oguchi, brought back to Nigeria is condemned. Irrespective of international treaty and uh, agreement with the uh, French government, that all the French territory during the colonial era will support Nigerian government uh, in the battle against insurgency. So that this government now said they are not going to be part to it. It may be a, a reflection of the attitude of Nigerian government to the president of Sudan when he ran to Nigeria for assistance when he wanted to be tried by the ICC. After a long day and night at the Eagle Square, the new APC chairman, John Odige Oyegun, was finally declared elected at about 10 a.m. on Saturday. Speaking afterwards, Odige Oyegun assured party members of his readiness to provide visionary leadership for the party ahead of the 2015 general elections. I am humbled by the great honor you have conferred on me and the sacred trust that you have reposed on me. And with extreme humility, I accept this responsibility. We have undertaken to lead this party into the next phase of its evolution and onwards thereafter to the fulfillment of its destined mission as the liberator of the Nigerian people. This is a heavy responsibility. But I assure you, it is a responsibility we are not taking lightly. Nigerians have been frustrated by the fact that there was no alternative national party comparable in strength to rescue them from the clutches of the PDP. Today, I want to say to Nigerians, your wait is over. Your prayers have been answered. Help is on the way. The APC has arrived. In 2015, the All Progressives Congress will provide Nigerians with visionary, dedicated, and people-oriented leadership that will liberate the nation from the clutches of the PDP's rule of poverty and oppression. Meanwhile, hundreds of thousands of members of the All Progressives Congress spent the night at the Eagle Square to see about 6,000 delegates elect emerge as new party officials. Not even the damper could dampen the mood of party faithful at APC's inaugural national convention. Pius Samuel reports. All roads in Abuja seemed to lead to the city centre on Friday night, where the long-awaited APC national convention was taking place. The atmosphere outside the Eagle Square could best be likened to a carnival. It was also not different inside the arena. But when it was time for speeches, the party leaders were businesslike. 2011, we have remained resolved to make sure that this country that we have helped to build, nobody should completely destroy it. 
enough destruction has been done. Stand firm, vote for APC, let's get this country moving again. You become part of a common sense revolution. And that common sense revolution is to fight insecurity, mismanagement, unemployment, hopelessness, and abduction of our children. Failure of a government, a president, this ball stop on the desk of the president. For our children, 250 and more of them to see me in captivity is a shame to all of us, but the biggest failure of ineptitude, incompetency, and a failure of good government. It was also a time for outgoing chairman B.C. Akonde to say goodbye. He used the opportunity to lash at the ruling PDP and give an insight into what to expect from an APC government at the center. Nigeria is today a subject of some form of global assistance. After it was apparently overwhelmed by security challenges. As I speak, personnel and equipment from a global coalition that includes the United States, the United Kingdom, Israel, and the United Nations are in our country, assisting us to rescue the over 200 school girls. The Eagle Square was fully occupied, and that was because there was little or no restriction. So, these party members had to sit on the ground. Every Wednesday is in the run-up to the convention, the chairmanship position was a three-horse race, but Tom Ikimi was eased out. He reacted by shunning the convention, while Timipre Silva publicly declared support for John Oyegun. There was also consensus in the choice of National Secretary and Publicity Secretary, but in spite of this, election still had to go on for several other positions, and under the watchful eyes of INEC, Officials and security operatives voting commenced at about 12.54 a.m. Some delegates who spoke to Core TV News were optimistic that the convention is coming at the right time. To support APC, a new party, as a result of a merger of three parties, three major parties in Nigeria, which has never happened in the history of politics in the entire world. I'm in the history of this nation, five governors of a ruling party defected into a new party. For the first time in the history of this party, over uh, this country, over 37 members of the House of Representatives, close to 20 senators, defected you know, to a new party. My brother, this is an idea whose time has come. APC faithfuls are also hopeful that after scaling through its first major test, the party is on track to giving the ruling party its biggest electoral challenge since 1999. As 2015 general elections approaches, Nigerians require good leadership, no matter the party affiliations of the candidates. As over 8,000 delegates cast their votes at the APC National Convention here in Abuja, Political watchers are waiting to see if the party will bring the desired change during the 2015 general elections. Pyro Samuel, Core TV News, Abuja. In a related issue, the presidency has congratulated the All Progressives Congress for its ability to hold a successful convention. It says that the national officers who were elected at the party's national convention emerged at a critical time when the nation was 
preparing for elections. The special advisor to the president on political matters, Ahmed Alkali, who stated this in a statement, charged the APC's National Executive Committee, led by its national chairman, John Odidio Yego, and other members of the Executive Committee, to put the interests of the nation first in whatever they do. He added that President Goodluck Jonathan has laid solid foundation for conduct of free, fair, and credible polls in the country, and all hands must be on deck to ensure the people of Ekiti State are allowed to exercise their right to elect their leaders with Without hindrance. As the June 21st Ekiti governorship election gets closer, organized labor across the country has endorsed the second term ambition of Governor Coyote Faimi. The union, led by the National Administrative Organ of the Nigeria Labor Congress, did the endorsement as a solidarity rally held in Adwekiti. Rashid Rashid was there and filed in this report. The organized labor led by the Central Working Committee of the Nigeria Labor Congress had in attendance the leadership of the trade unions across the country. Nigeria Labor Congress President Abdul Wahid Omar says it is imperative to support the cause of IME due to his antecedents in labor movement. And we can always identify with people who identify with the movement, particularly those who have diligently served the movement in different capacities. Your Excellency, I do know that your antecedents in labor movement in struggle are not something that are hidden. And therefore, if we choose to identify openly with you, it is because we have every cause to do that. Fire me expressed gratitude to the labor leaders and vowed to represent very well the movement that prepared him for leadership in all spheres. Most critical reason why your presence there speaks volume is for people to know that leadership is not accidental. My partisanship is an extension of my activism. It's not a substitute. It is all encapsulated in our own ideological orientation that power and policy is about people. The endorsement rally later moved to the Uluyemi Coyote Stadium. This time, the NLC National Leadership was not there. The Equity State Chapter of the Nigerian Labor Congress and Trade Union Congress were, however, at hand to assure Fayemi of his second term ambition. Not only for the adoption of Governor Coyote Fayemi for second term, but an avenue to demonstrate to the outside world that Governor Fayemi and the entire workers in Equity State our partners in progress. Fire me, you have my support and the support of my people. Thank you very much. With the June 21st governorship election barely a week away, political watchers are waiting to see the outcome of this endorsement. Rashid Rashid, Core TV News, Adoekiti. The INEC resident electoral commissioner in Ikiti State, Ali Lupai, has cleared the air on the origin and destination of a truck arrested with electoral materials during the week in Adwekiti, the state capital. He insisted that the contents of the vehicle are the commission's obsolete materials. He also decries comments credited to the commander of the army detachment drafted to oversee security during the election, Ali Umomo, indicating that the materials in the vehicle were dated 2014. Rashid Rashid monitored this latest twist from Adwekiti and filed in this report. The interception of the Lagos band truck on Thursday at Italre and the dismissal of the materials as obsolete by INEC and claims by the military commander who arrested the truck indicating that some 2014 materials were found in the truck is now eliciting reactions. Commenting on this development, the INEC resident electoral commissioner in Ekiti State, Ali Lupai, explained that the truck contained the only waste product of the electoral body. You have this as uh, INEC stamp, and uh, you have this as stamps that is currently in use. And uh, what 
is curious about this issue is that you cannot claim that 2014 stamp is a waste material. We only received the stamps that would be used for the 2014 uh, election on the 13th, that is just yesterday. In other words, as at the time that that truck was intercepted, we have not even received the stamps. Stress on the fact that the materials found in the truck were indeed obsolete, Ekiti Ainek unveils aprons which will be used in the forthcoming election as the resident electric commissioner also announced that the chairman of the INEC and the inspector general of police, Muhammad Abubakar, are due to arrive at Ekiti on next Wednesday alongside the sensitive materials to be used for the poll. The sensitive materials will come next week. The chairman of the commission, uh, Professor Atahiru Mohamed Jaga, will be coming for the final stakeholders meeting on 18th, Wednesday 18th, uh, this month. The Inspector General of Police is also expected to be there. The fears nursed by the electorate over the credibility of the forthcoming election were also laid to rest, as the resident electoral commissioner assured all of INEX neutrality. We do not have any preferred candidate or political party, and we have no reason whatsoever to compromise with anybody. We want to achieve a free, fair, and credible election, and therefore appeal to all the stakeholders in this state to play the game according to the rules of the game. Although Ekiti State has 2,195 polling units, the resident electoral commissioner reveals that the figure has increased to 2,803 polling cubicles due to the largeness of some polling units. This, he added, is to enhance smooth voting system. Rashid Rashid, Core TV News, Adoikiti. The Ekiti State Resident Electoral Commissioner Halilu Pai says the Independent National Electoral Commission has engaged 7,941 people as ad hoc staff for the June 21st governorship election in the state. Pai told newsmen in Adwekiti that most of the ad hoc staff were members of the National Youth Service Corps and students of the tertiary institutions. According to the REC, the Commission engaged such a high number of ad hoc staff in order to cater for the 766,132 persons registered as voters in the state. Pai added that out of the 7,941 people engaged as ad hoc staff, 2,195 would work as presiding officers, while 5,605 would work as assistant presiding officers. Some of the ad hoc staff will be deployed to 177 electoral wards, 16 collation centers at the local government headquarters, and the rest will be in Adwekiti, the state capital, he stated. The REC says the money to pay the allowances of those engaged had been credited into the account of the NYC in Ekiti State to avoid delay in payment. He explained that each core member would receive 11,000 naira made up of 7,000 naira as honorarium and 4,000 naira as transport fare. With less than three months to the Ocean State Governorship poll, the State Police Command has assured that adequate steps will be taken to ensure a hit free election. The command arrested two suspected armed political thugs at one of the campaign rallies in the state, Bid Okoro Inoshubu has more. The Ocean State Police Command has arrested two suspected political thugs. The arrests were made at one of the recent campaign rallies in the state. At the time of their arrest, some dangerous weapons and local charms were reportedly found on them. The Ocean Police Command Public Relations Officer for Lasha Deodoro gives insight into how the arrests were made. So I meant why there that day? doing their visibility policing before they sighted the suspects. And during this course, they were searched, and all the dangerous weapons were found in their vehicle and also in their trousers. 
According to Odoro, further investigations is still being carried out to determine the level of complicity of both men. Diligent investigation will be carried out, and if they are found guilty, they will be charged to court to face the music. The special assistant to the state governor on security affairs, Kunle Amos, buttressed the need for the ongoing investigations by the police. But we are trying to see the authenticity of what they were actually going to use the cutlass for and all that. So investigation is still ongoing. They are still just suspects until it's determined and it's investigated that they are actually culprits. You can't say precisely whether they are offender or not. The command spokesman for Lashadi Odoro confirms the readiness of the police to adequately handle the state's governorship election come August 9. So according to the Inspector General of Police Transformation Agenda on Visibility Policing, we are fully on ground. We've strategized all our men that during this election nearing period, we are not going to take it lightly with anyone found with any offensive uh, weapons. With preparations for the August 9 election in Ocean State heating up by the day, will police assurance of providing security before and during the election be solely relied on? Events in the very near future will reveal this to us. Bid Okoro. Call TV News, Oshogbo. And that's all we have for you on Core TV News at 7. Join us at 9.45 for the primetime news. Thank you so much for being there. I am Ebulomo Adipoli.